Hey guys, it's John P with Geek Beat. We have got a really cool show for you today. We're going to learn how to make cinemagraphs from the guys at Flixel. Stand by. Okay guys, I'm really excited because I missed out at CES when Callie got to spend some time with Mark from Flixel. But we're gonna remedy that right now. Hey Mark, how are you today? I'm great, hey John, how are you? Thanks for having me. Thank you, thank you for coming on. So I'm excited because I have been, uh, I'm into photography, I love this stuff. Right. And I've been seeing these new kinds of pictures that are moving pictures. Like Correct. we're not talking about 1900 era Charlie Chaplin, we're talking about a photograph, high resolution, lots of detail, but there's something going on in the picture and it's moving. Absolutely, we're talking about Flixels. Um, you know, we refer to them as living photos. And it's this really interesting hybrid between, as you mentioned, a still photograph uh, and a video. So there's this hint of motion that's incorporated uh, into an otherwise still image and uh, creating this entirely new mesmerizing uh, visual medium. I think it's cool because sometimes you see one of these images and it's really subtle. I think one of the first ones I ever saw was like a landscape, but it had some grass in the foreground, you know? Right. And, and the grass was just gently waving in the wind a little bit and it freaked me out. But well, you I hope it, I hope you weren't too scared, but uh, <laughs> but but absolutely, you know, it's, a lot of people are sort of uh, kind of you know surprised. You know, they they think they're just looking at a basic you know static static image, and suddenly something comes to life. And in a lot of cases, you know, certain artists will utilize a little uh, you know uh, delay uh, you know on the loop, for example. So you, it starts as an image, and then suddenly something comes to life, and it really draws you. In. Uh, I think it's very you know very impactful visually, and I think. Um, uh, again, just a new spellbinding way to, yeah. to, to communicate um, art and expression. So for those people who haven't seen one, I've actually got your Instagram feed up. You've got Instagram.com forward slash Flixel Photos. And what is the deal? People just take cool, cool little cinemagraph Flixel pictures and then they share them? Or do you share them or how does this work? So what's really cool is that um, we, we offer a series of different uh, capture tools from, um, you know, obviously on iOS, and now we've launched a new product called Cinemagraph Pro. So you can, you can create these on your Mac, and you can share these via our platform on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you can export a 15-second video and, and, you know, and import that into Instagram and share with your friends. So um, we really want to make sure that people, uh, you know, share these across the board. Nice. So what we're seeing are these really high quality photos that just incorporate some movement. It looks like um, what I'm doing is I'm kind of scrolling through a few of them and uh, you click on the image and then it just starts moving. Oh, that is awesome. This chick is just blowing bubbles in the middle of a static photo. Totally cool. Amazing. L literally amazing. It's incredibly visually capturing. So. We're going to learn how to do this today with your application, right? That is, that is correct. Okay, so for those who would like to play along, um, this is a Mac application. You need to have a Mac, uh, but it's called Cinemagraph Pro. You can go to either the Flixel website, F-L-I-X-E-L.com, or the Mac App Store, download it, and... Uh, I shared a, a little video, so just to set this thing up, uh, I thought it would be kind of cool. We used Cali as a model, and we set up a candle, and I took a short video. You, I think this is what I was supposed to do. Take a little video of her, because we're going to convert a video into a photo, right? That is correct. So actually, at the source, you are capturing um, video. Okay. And not stills. Okay, so... I've never done this before. Um, this is the first time we're going to do this, but I shot about, I don't know, like a minute worth of this video of Callie sitting here kind of staring at a, at a little flame. Uh, we put it on a, back, a black background. I've shared the link to that in the Geek Beat Live chat, and if you're watching this pre-recorded, then check out the blog post that goes with it, and we will have links to the software and also to this particular demo file. 
But you can also right now go over to our uh, live chat room, uh, geeky.tv forward slash live, right? And you can get the link. One of the guys in there will share it with you so you can play along. Okay. So having said that, I have installed Cinemagraph Pro on my computer. Excellent. And we've got a view of my desktop right here. I got two things on the desktop. First, I just launched Flick Cinemagraph Pro, and I have, a, I have the file over here on the side on my desktop. I don't know what to do next, Mark. <laughs> So you want to? So you have your file, so you can uh, if you can just import that file, or you can actually drag and drop it right into um, right into the software as well. So you can go create a new document, or actually just drop it, just I drag can, and drop. Wait, I can just drag and drop yeah. this right onto here. Drag it into. Do you have it into your, in your applications at the bottom uh, on your on your Mac right there? Okay, and just drop it. Oh wait, drag it, it. If you go, if you actually drop into the app, if you go down. Oh, drop it on the down on the uh, right. taskbar. Yeah. Just, just bring it right in. Okay, Super I'll drop easy. it right there. Oh, sweet. There we go. Super duper. Okay, now it says choose a location and file name. So Road, Save it wherever you'd like. I'll, I'll leave it on the desktop. If I move it later, is that going to be okay? You can, you can put it wherever you like. Okay. No problem. All right, I'm going to just save it on the desktop. So now it says copying. I called, I called this one Cali and the Candle, but I think the <laughs> download file is like Cali, and the Cali by Candlelight or Candlelight Cali or something. Gotcha. So the original file that I was working off of was shot on a 5D Mark III with the 70 to 200 millimeter lens. We shot it with a black backdrop and a single candle. Um, it's a grainy, crappy file. I did it last night really fast, so don't anybody give me a hard time about it. But hopefully it's going to work. We're going to find out. Um, the What I then did in order to make it more downloadable for everyone was I passed it through Final Cut 10, Final Cut X, and I just literally exported it as a uh, MP4 type file. So that's what you guys are going to gain access to. Okay, by the way, does it matter if we, sh if we, you know, what quality of video we use or, you know, what, what do you have any recommendations for what quality we need to be starting with? I mean, what's great is that you know we support the latest technology, which is really great. So obviously, you know, any video that's shot uh, in high definition, so 1080, uh, you can import and render as such. Uh, what's really exciting, we can we also support uh, 4K oh, as wow. well. So we know 4K is all the craze this year in the in the photography community. So you can actually import a 4K uh, video file, import that, and we'll render it out as 4K as a as an H.264, an MP4, or for example, an Apple ProRes file, so you're not losing any compression. If you, if you choose to, for example, put this on a beautiful digital display, it's just going to look phenomenal. Wow, okay. Yeah. And by the way, um, one of the things that you told me in advance was whatever video we shoot, basically our subjects needed to be really still. Is that correct? I mean, what kind of... T Tell, tell me what do I need to be thinking through right. when I capture this video? I think a couple of things. I mean, uh, regarding, I mean, stability is obviously very key. I think that comes uh, twofold. Number one, when you're actually shooting um, your video, you have to make sure you're on a tripod. So that's very important. You don't want to shoot anything handheld because otherwise the video is kind of, you know, jiggly and you're going to encounter all sorts of issues in, in post-production. Okay. So number one, always on a tripod, on sticks, and you're good to go. Uh, regarding your subject, it all depends on what your creative is. So, for example, if you're in this case, you know, Cali uh, is you know near a candle, and if, if the motion is actually the flame, the flickering, uh, the flickering uh, flame, in that case, she doesn't have to be hyper stable by any means. It's not necessary because the motion is external to her, right? Oh, okay. And the candle is super stable. So, I guess it all depends on what your creative is. If, for example, her hair was flowing or something right behind her, so you have was moving, then you have to be conscientious of this idea of foreground, background, and if we want to, you know, what we call kind of, uh, you know, body motion or spot motion uh, on the subject, then you have to be conscientious and make sure that, you know, kind of direct the model and be like, if you're very still, we're going to make this portion of your body, um, but if the motion is external, nothing to worry about. So I saw, for example, a video where, uh, I mean, one of the cinemagraphs on your feed where there was a, a model and she was standing like kind of with her hands and her hips looking straight at the camera and her long right. hair was kind of waving like this. So she, in that particular 
shot, she had to stand really still to get her hair to do that? Or could she, I mean, if she was moving a little, did that not harm anything? Well, I, th I think you're referring to a very famous uh, supermodel that we work with. So uh, she's, uh, uh, she's pretty familiar with uh, Flixel's technology and really one of the kind of pioneers in this whole industry, even for, I mean, not just from a you know, technological standpoint, but from a modeling perspective. So in this case, yes, uh, being that we were animating um, you know, the hair portion, she had to be relatively still. And, and obviously she did a phenomenal job. Yeah. The living image turned out so beautifully. And she's a professional, so she's probably a little more used to that kind of posing. Uh, well, you should, I, I think she made the cover of Sports Illustrated twice, which wow. I think it's, is, is kind of a historical thing. So she's she knows a thing or two about modeling. So awesome. when, we, when we were giving her direction in terms of, uh, uh, you know, how to position all this, she was she was quite amazing at it. So cool. Okay. Okay. So I think we understand that, and I'm sure we'll we can come back to that later. Let's take a look at this video. So let's do it. Um, we so I dropped it on the on the app, and I've got this window. I'm assuming I can resize this because it's kind of small at the moment. You can actually go full screen. Oh, okay. Oh, I or go can full adjust screen. it as you wish. Absolutely. Oh, sweet. Okay, because I shot it in 1080p, Beautiful. so we've got that. Now I actually just saw Callie blinking. So Callie's moving, but she's looking kind of weird, kind of blurry, matrixy like. So all right. So the reason for that. So right now we're in our first mode, which we a trim mode. So this is essentially uh, your video editing uh, kind of uh, feature of okay. the program. So you you see your kind of uh, your kind of your, your video uh, sequences at the bottom. This oh, yeah. is basically all your frames that are lined up. And what you want to do is basically select uh, the key frames that you're going to utilize to create your living image. So you can actually go there and, and kind of play around with that little section uh, and find your sweet spot of which frames are kind of working best. So okay. see if you move that around. So now, that, as I move it, we can see, there you go, there you can see where there was some movement on the flame. That's, by the way, just so that everybody knows how I did that, in case you were trying to replicate this, I, I just stood off camera by a few feet and used a big, like, poster board thing and very gently moved it to cause that flame to try and jump around a bit. So I'm assuming we want to get some of that flickery kind of candle motion in there, right? I mean, I think that's. I mean, I think that's that was your intent, and I think that's gonna that's gonna turn out very good. So that the that most like effect you're seeing is basically. So you see at the beginning of your sequence, you have a little purple marker, and that's basically anchoring your 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 first frame of your footage, which is going to be your still frame, right? Because okay. we, we talked about what a living photo is. It's a combination of a still, and video. So that purple marker is going to be your still frame, um, and. What we're seeing the program do in trim mode is overlay the video. So it's showing you the range of motion. So in this case, we're kind of seeing just how much is that, that, uh, that candle flickering. So that's kind of cool. I kind of like that. What do you think, John? How do you yeah, feel about I that? Yeah, I think so. Uh, the, now, do I have to worry that, like, uh, do I have to get the candle, the, the flame, to kind of get right back in the exact spot it started from? You don't have to worry about that. So what's going to happen is when we get into our, our loop mode, we're going to be able to uh, kind of choose our style of loop and, and kind of play around with that. So at this point, what we want to do is really kind of choose our, 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 our sequence of frames. Okay. And I, I like that. I would even, I mean, you could even trim that up a little more if you'd like. A little shorter? Because, yeah, yeah, that's I'll like cut uh, it up a that's nine bit. seconds. Yeah, you don't, you don't, honestly, for this particular creative, you don't really need that many frames. Right, so I would cut that up a How little about, bit. That's about six. That's you see where? Did you see? You see on the on the marker in the bottom where it started to flip? I would I would still bring that in a little more. Our, our, I think our first frame should come in a little, a little later, maybe like right there. Yeah, right I think about that's in here. Good. Okay. Look at that. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. I like that. What do you think, John? How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think I think that, that we're just going to get a lot of flickering. Uh, uh, which probably is good because that's going to be the only motion element in this picture, in this moving picture, right? Absolutely, and I'll okay. show you in, in another mode how we can kind of slow that down a little bit and give it a little of a kind of a different feel as well. Okay, so we've got about uh, that says it's from fourteen point two three seconds to nineteen point oh four. So uh, I don't know. I guess that's about five seconds, four and a half, that's, five that's, seconds. Okay. For this, all we need. Okay, cool. You're doing great, John. By the way. All right. <laughs> First, that's just phenomenal. See, see how intuitive this is. It's pretty easy. So. <laughs> so we got our sequence. So I, I feel good about that. I, if you feel good, I think we can move on to the next step, which is selecting our uh, going to our masking mode. Okay. So Up this here? is 
up here. Yeah, get the brush. So yeah, this it looks is like a brush the, and it says mask. Okay, so I just exactly. clicked it. All right. So this is what we refer to as our live mask. So I'll go to the, to the top right and I would just adjust my brush size because you don't need that big of a brush. So I would kind of... By the way, do I have to use that bar or do you have, just out of curiosity, those little photo <laughs> shot? Oh, I figured it out. Did you? Yeah, you can use the little, what do they call, brackets to go bigger and smaller, just like in Photoshop. Absolutely. So you can, you can adjust the size of your brush, which is very key. And actually, would, what I would do also is I would double, double pinch and zoom in on that image a little bit as well. Oh, oh, Let's sweet. Go. There we go. Look at that. Nice. And, oh, and I can uh, move it around with my fingers, too. I'm just double, I'm double finger dragging it. There you go. Okay, so now... So, and, and, and this is, and, and I would just adjust my hardness, so I would bring that down a little bit. Okay. Just bring down a little bit, and, you know, for, for guidance purposes, why don't we, uh, why don't we trigger the mask, where it says overlay mask. So overlay the mask, okay. Yeah, I would hit that. Oh, okay. There now you go. it's all blue. So now let's go in, and this is, this is what I love about the software. We basically are going to reveal the motion in real time. Okay. So just paint over it. Just, how big, do, how big should I make my brush? Uh, you can make it a little smaller, but that's fine. Okay. I'll just right. go for it and just... Oh, freaky. That's it. And in real time... And so just maybe give it... A, so I made kind of a black background. I, I guess it does... The candle's not even moving, so even if candle I... Candle is fine. Yeah, you can even go around it if you if so choose to. That's the beauty about Cause there's kind this of particular a, candle. It's yeah, still... It's, it's got still that, as a mount. It's got that kind of flickering... Um, uh, you can see the the flame for some reason around it, you know, a little yeah. camera flare, if you will. Yeah, that's fine. We want to give it a little more room. Yeah, I guess. So I, I mean, I guess there's nothing going on behind it, so we could pretty much open it up pretty good, I guess. Exactly. Okay, so now that's how do you, doing how do you feel about that? I think that looks pretty cool. I think it looks pretty cool. So I would I would zoom out. Okay, pinch so. pinch and zoom. Oh, that's in. Okay. That gives us, and I would now remove the mask overlay to kind of put us back into context. Sweet. I don't know about you, but she seems pretty, you know, there's a degree of a stun there. The candle's doing its magic. That's amazing. I kind of like that. I mean, it's pretty, I like much it. already a, it's pretty much already a cinemagraph. I think we're pretty much there, but let's, um, let's get a little more creative. So how about we go to our next feature, which is our loop mode. Okay. And we're going to play around with our styles of, uh, of looping. So right now it's set on a repeat loop, but I think for this, I would like to try a bounce loop. Okay. So meaning the motion starts at point A, goes to B, and then goes back to A. So let's trigger the bounce loop. Oh, because is that because like at the end of this, it, you can kind of detect... It kind of fades, right? Yeah, there's kind of a right there. You could, exactly. You could tell that it it's not a perfect closed loop, if you will. Exactly, because right now we're on a repeat loop. So it's basically okay. going from point A to point B and starting over again. And I think we have, a, you, a, and you see the bottom there, you've got a, that green component. Oh, yeah. Right? That's your crossfade. So you've got a little crossfade, so it kind of fades out and then starts up again. But Oh, it and, just automatically did that. Exactly. So I think, the, again, always depending on your creative, you're going to adjust, adjust your style of looping and all that kind of jazz. So in this now, case, a bounce loop is, is, I think, more suitable. Okay, we'll switch to that, but just out of curiosity, so this crossfade, if I grab this little green bar, bar can I, I, I'm guessing? Bring it up, yeah. yep. So I, I can or, shorten it or lengthen it? Yep, so if you actually bring it up yep. in the sequence of frames, you're going to see the flame just kind of fade away and then start up. Yep. Awesome. Okay, so now how right do I there. go to bounce loop? Just trigger the bounce loop. Click Easy. on it? Click on That's bounce? It. Just click it. Oh, there now, we go. Okay. Now we're in bounce mode. Oh, so now I see the little bar is just literally, it's going like right now it's yep. going to left. Now it's going over to the right and back and to left. Uh, so we're getting the, fl the flame in this case kind of running forward and then reverse. Correct, because I think again, for this particular creative, I think the bounce loop is, is more suitable. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Right? Because why, why would the flame just suddenly kind of fade, reappear, and I think it makes a lot more sense. So now the other thing I'd like to try, um, John, is maybe go into our, um, adjust the speed of okay. our animation. So I would go into the speed module and just slow that down a little bit. Okay. You know, I think it'd be cool. I mean, I love it when, when cinemagraph images are kind of slowed down a little bit. And 
All right, well, I turned it down to 0.5, so that's like half speed. So let's evaluate how that looks. Yeah, that's all right. I think I'd probably speed it up a little bit, actually. Maybe you go no. to like 0.7. Yeah, let's go to like 0.7 or 0.8. Okay, now so, it's so at 0.7. Because I think what we want to avoid, and this is, this is a good tip for, for users and artists, um, if you're, did you, you shot this, what, at 30 frames? 24, 30? Uh, I, yeah, I think I shot it at 30, 30 frames, I think. 30 frames, right. So the, the, the thing we have to be conscious of, if you're shooting at 30 frames and then you slow down your animation and post, sometimes it can get a little choppy. Like you saw, we brought it to 0.5 and it kind of right. got a little choppy there. So if you shot, let's say, at 60 frames. I should have gone uh, at 60. But certain cameras, you got to be careful because if you go up to 60, you're going to drop your resolution to sometimes 720. Ideally, yeah. you want to maintain a you know an HD resolution as, as much as possible. Although, uh, although for certain types of applications, like me personally, mm -hmm. I like to share images on Google Plus, and okay. so. One of the, I mean, the the only way that I know of that we can share these kind of photos is as an animated GIF, GIF, sorry. And uh, if we do a full 1080p, won't it be like ginormous, like 20, 30 megs to try and upload? It it would be it would be somewhat ginormous, yes. Okay. So I think depending on your application, um, you can obviously uh, adjust your aspect ratio. So Flixel enables you to output as a as, as HD or 4K um, auto looping, auto playing video on Flixel.com. Uh, so the, what's great about this is you you know when you push your image, your living photo to Flixel.com, it comes with an embed code, and you can take that embed code and then uh, and implement that into your blog or website. Oh, so we're talking a high resolution image. Uh, plays across all browsers um, on mobile, and it looks phenomenal. And you can actually adjust the aspect ratio. So, for example, if you want it to look more like an ad or you want it to be the centerpiece in your website, even though you shot a 1080, you can actually reduce that, um, reduce that, uh, for the those dimensions. Yeah, dimensions as, as so please. Now, for Google+, Plus, obviously, um, the feed enables uh, GIF implementation. So we do also offer the ability to output as a, as a GIF. Okay, sweet. All right. So, so we slowed it down. It's at 0.7. I'm pretty happy. I think it looks... Are you digging that or what? I am. I think I like it. Let me just try it at 0.8 just for grins. <laughs> uh, you know. Now that looks a little too fast for me. Just, I like 0.7. John, you almost ruined it. Go back to <laughs> 0.7 immediately. <laughs> okay. What's this with the delay? So the delay, um, as we talked about, it could be used um, as an element of surprise. So in this case... I would particularly use it. You can show users and see what happens. Is we delay the motion for X amount of time. So let's say you put a two second delay for two seconds. It, it looks entirely like a still image, and then suddenly, oh wow, it's going to come to life, uh, which can kind of take you know a viewer sort of by surprise. And and again, depending on the creative, um, it can make a lot of sense. And on this bounce, when it goes back to the oh, it goes back to being still. So in this case, I would probably, if I would incorporate a delay component, I'd probably refer to a repeat, repeat loop instead of a bounce. Right. Um, but I think for our creative purposes here, we don't need that. I would no. Okay. No. I, I like the I, I like the look that she has on her face, but she did move around a little. She blinked her eyes and stuff. What if what if that? I don't know how it selected that particular frame for her for her look. Um, I mean, I don't know about you. I like it because no, she's it looks really good. focused. She's great, and and we could create a we could attempt another motion and maybe unveil her eyes. But I like to create one particular focal point in an image when creating cinemagraph pictures. And I think in this case, we want to really draw attention, you know, to the flame. I think that's where. No, oh yeah, you know. definitely. No, I think it looks perfect. But I mean, I guess my only question was, what if it had grabbed a frame where, let's say, her eyes were closed? Is there a way to change that portion? Because I, I saw so. how we selected the, the 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 clip length, and I see how we kind of you know gave the candle its flicker. But how do we select what that still image for her was? So it's really cool. So you see that little purple. Go. Let's go back to our trim mode. Okay. So the first mode that we we explore together okay. on our on our creative journey, John. Yep. <laughs> Uh, and if you're seeing that little purple marker at the beginning of your sequence, yeah. you can actually take that. Let's drag it around. Okay. So drag it. Let's move that around, and you can select any oh. still frame. So 
with that, what's really cool is that we can actually find, let's say she had another expression that we really, really dug at another area of our footage. We can go and select that as our um, so we can pick frame, anywhere. still frame, yeah. Another thing I want to show you about this, which is really close, so we anchor it here, or wherever you like. Um, if you then go to the bottom left of your screen, all the way to the left, there we go, click that. And what's really cool is, obviously, you know, we want to do a little more kind of post work on the image. A lot of photographers are, are you know, going to want to fix those blemishes oh. and add a particular color treatment. So you can actually export your still image, drop it into Lightroom, Etc. I could apply run a filter on that. I could clean that, clean up that graininess. Clean it up. You know, apply your custom, uh, you know, trade, you know, trademark uh, color treatment, uh, and then re-import it back in uh, into our software. And I now, wanted to do that. I didn't realize we could I do that because I was thinking, okay, once we make this into an animated GIF, I'm pretty much done. I can't. I'm gonna have to share this, and she looks all grainy. But if I was in Photoshop, exactly. I could have cleaned that graininess up. You could have cleaned it up, and and I would have I would use an embed code and have you know a beautiful HD, you know auto looping, auto playing Flixel on your blog or website and blow your fans away. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So that's a really cool feature, and also what I want to show where it says reset still image. So for example, if you want to go back to the beginning of your sequence, you just click that, and hit that, and you're gonna see your marker automatically is gonna go back to oh. the beginning of your sequence, which is really cool, right? Instead of kind of Oh, around yeah, there, perfect. done, right? Yeah. So if you move around that sequence, and you're like, oh, I want to get my marker, one click and you're there. And then, so, yeah, so I don't have to worry about like, okay, that's a good one, but maybe I can get a slightly better, no, 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 dang it, now how do I go back to the other one? Just exactly. reset. Reset, you're there. Okay, cool. What else can we do to this bad boy? Well, you know what? I'd like to uh, go into effects. So for example, for those who want to kind of, you know, uh, push a living photo really quickly and don't want to go in and Photoshop and do all this kind of, you know, crazy work. You yeah. We actually have like close to 30 custom, uh, custom built filters. Okay. So really just cool. click on effects here. Let's hit on, let's hit effects. Okay. And okay. Now it just brought yeah, up a bunch of, uh, photo effects, fade, yeah, absolutely. Chrome. Can I just click on them? Try some out, John, go for it. Okay. Fade, Get creative. Chrome. That gave me a lot of color. Process, transfer. That looks like an old kind of uh, 1970s old style TV. Old school. You know what? One I want to show you, if you go all the way down, there's one called Flixelate, which I think is really fun. Where you can actually, where Flixelate. it only it actually only uh, heightens the color on the animation. Oh, wow. Which is kind of fun. So or you can... Or you can do a reverse flixelate and it does the opposite, which is kind of fun too. Oh, cool. See that? Yeah, that is really cool. We're getting creative. Yeah, I like it. We're, we're exploring, exploring our creative uh, boundaries, pushing the boundaries. Um, so what I want to show here, so let's say, I mean, let's say select any kind of filter you want. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, let's, let's take that one, for example. Um, oh, the one that I was just, well, uh, let's do a flixelate just for fun. Let's go to Flixelate, and then okay. if we go, and then if we go to another mode called Adjustments, which we just just launched, by the way, okay. which I'm really pumped about, you can other? actually. Okay. That's right. We can actually do. Um, you can actually adjust the intensity of your filter, and I really love that because you know how a lot of apps you just kind of you apply your filter and sort of that's yeah. it. You're kind yeah. of done. And how many times is it like, oh, it's perfect, but I just need to lower the intensity a little bit or adjust the radius or uh, tweak my contrast. And now you can do it all within the app, which is really, that's really cool. super. Yeah. And I think that's a great, really cool new addition. So I like that. Much. Yeah. And, and maybe you know what? if you're, you're, you're going to say your custom color, you can still do that by exporting it. But as cool as you can get a lot of your foundation work um, all done within, within Cinemagraph Pro. Cool. Which is really jazzy. So we just hit all of, we hit trim, mask, and it looks like I can just keep clicking on these. Loop. Did we That's do, right. Yeah, loop was the speed and delay. The, then we've got the adjustments. And I see if I needed to, I could go ahead and adjust them, uh, some make some basic adjustments like exposure, brightness, etc. Correct. And then we've got our effects. So I'm going to I'm going to pull the effect off that just for grins and just go back to none, no effect. Your your initial uh, the way you captured the original light was was quite mesmerizing. I think you did a good job there. We need an effect, John. <laughs> Actually, we're, we're probably we're going to try and create maybe a custom geek beat filter. How about yeah. that? 
my, VP, my VP of engineering is going like, oh, dude, no. We need, a, we need a Cali you know, Lewis brand. Make, we need a Cali <laughs> filter. We should just make one called Cali. Everyone else is going like, don't make promises. Right. Califi. That's what we'll call it. Califi. We'll look into it. We'll see what we right, can do. Right, right, right. Okay, now, we, so pretend we're done. Although I, I, mean, I am, go, I'm later, I, I guess I can save this and come back into it and make an, another adjustment later. You can save this, uh, come back to it, make your adjustments, your tweaks, whatever you like, okay. 100%. Uh, just like on any other post-production software, um, what I maybe what we can go we go over now is well, how do you output this? What yeah, are let's options, do it. Right. Yep. So let's let's go to render. Okay, got a little let's, box up here. Render. Let's render this baby out. Sweet. So here we have um, your different um, your different formats, basic. So we have H.264, so you can just render it as an MP4. Um, you have Apple ProRes, yeah, 422, and then 44. 44, which which uh, great formats to to push out, you know, especially if you're gonna input this on like digital display, so you don't want to compress your file, right? Yeah. Uh, especially if you're inputting an Apple ProRes file, you want to kind of spit it out uh, under the same sort of settings and and all that jazz. And you know, if you so choose to, you can we still offer the 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 ability to output as a as a GIF as well. And uh, what's really cool, you can you can adjust your your different sizes, so your aspect ratios, um, right here. Ah. So you have a quarter full, which is really cool. Oh, and it's telling I, me the resolution at a quarter. This is four eighty by two seventy. Exactly. Uh, Six forty by three sixty. Nine sixty by five forty. Okay. And what is this total time? Twelve seconds. Great. So let's go back to like one of the video options because essentially when we're outputting an MP4 or as an Apple ProRes, it's basically a video, right? Okay. It's a movie. It's a movie file. So here, what this means, repetitions is our loop lasts twelve seconds, and let's say you want to run that, you know, twenty-four, or you can just adjust that so it will run X amount of time. X amount of repetitions before it starts over again. So, gotcha. for example, so you take this, so you output as a as a movie file. It's on your desktop. Let's say you want to embed this in a presentation, uh, on a keynote, or whatever. Well, before it kind of hits the end of the loop and starts over, you can you can set. I mean, it could run for you know thirty seconds, two minutes, five x amount of time you choose. So I I set it to I've got it on H.264. I've got yep. a full size with 24 repetitions, and it gives me about five minutes, just over five minutes of video. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of time. I think you're probably good uh, with like 30 or 40 seconds, but okay, Let's right? Because because we'll now, do it three a, times. Yeah, because as a quick time, you just set your um, your, your your video file to to loop. You trigger the loop, and you're good. Oh, okay, cool. Right. Okay. So if you'd put this in a presentation, or let's say you'd put this on a screen, for example, uh, beautiful, uh, you know, 1080 screen HD, uh, you just trigger the loop on your on your on your universal video player, and then you're you're good to go. Sweet. All right. So then, just for grins, I'm just going to make one repetition because we can always loop it later. So now, I click totally. next. Next, and then it's going to. Okay. It asks for a title. We'll put Cali. By candlelight. <laughs> Love I wonder it. if she. I wonder if she's feeling really weird right now that we're all like watching <laughs> us render her out in by candlelight. Here we go. Render. Oh, rendering mm. fifty. Wow, that's pretty quick. Sixty-six, seventy percent. That's it. Super. E it's easy. Easy. Okay, hundred percent complete. Now we're done. Okay. So now you have that file on your desktop. Uh, so and you I'm can gonna drop out of. My desktop mode. Okay, so here it is. Let's preview. Yeah. And there it is. And you can go into your uh, your your view tab, select uh, loop, and it will loop. So you can. And is it under view or is it under? Well, I have to open it with QuickTime Player. I guess. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. There we go. There it is. And then view. Loop it. Loop. I see. And now I just Boom. hit play. And. We're going to keep going. We're halfway into it. I want to watch that little timer thing. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And it started back over. Awesome. That's it. So, for example, if you're doing a presentation, you want to input this in your keynote. It's very simple. Just drag it in. Um, you can put this on SD card. Uh, you can put this on a Raspberry Pi and, and then integrate it uh, into a digital display or 
actually funded straight from your your Mac uh, via an HDMI cable. So there's there's so many different options. You can make uh, you could like hang purposes. a monitor on the wall and and make it digital art and John, just leave it there. If you want to if you want to impress your distinguished guests at Christmas or Thanksgiving, how cool would it be to put up one of these screens or over your fireplace and you've got beautiful living photography coming in and out. That'd be badass. That'd be really I th- cool. I think it'd be the toast of the party. Awesome. Well, thanks, Mark. That was easy, actually. I thought John, it was going to be a lot harder. John, there's one last thing I want to do before, before we part ways. Do it. One last thing. So if we go back into the program, there's okay. this really cool feature, Upload. So what is Upload? Upload. Okay. Right here. Upload. So when we upload that, oh, we have to actually have to open an account, ah, uh, which you can do later. I can do um, that. So when you upload it, it will bring it to Flixel.com. Uh, so what that means is you can set up your, you know, a great profile on Flixel.com, uh, and has all your stuff there, all your Flixels, and we're actually hosting it. And that's where your embed code comes into play. And you can take that embed code, and as I mentioned earlier, you can now drag that and import that into your blog or your website. Yeah. So if you go to actually, if you go up, oh, that's our little nice. That's one of our demos. If you go into, if you go back to the website, and under showcase, you're showcase. going to see how it, how it how it looks online. So go to showcase. What do we got there? Uh, we got featured uh, gallery and America's next top model. What What do you want to look at, John? I want to see featured. Let's go into featured. Oh, that's awesome. Look at that. And so an this ice is, light using an ice light. I've got one of those. We, we dig those. Um, so if you go down, just scroll down a little bit. So you see where it says embed? Uh, it says embed, share. Right you oh, click yeah. that. There we go. And I've easy got an embed peasy. code. Look how easy that is. You grab that and you can now embed that into your blog, your website. And if you shot you know, 1080, you can blow that up 1080. You can make that, you can adjust your aspect ratio to, to, your, you know, to whatever it is that you like. So, and what's really cool about that is it just looks great. In case they're not they're not gifs. I really just wanted to point that out. Yeah, they're odd. They actually they're auto playing, auto looping, high definition uh, videos. And you know, if this is where Flixel's uh, you know uh, embed player does its magic, and these are these are displayed in such beautiful quality across all browsers. You know, because when that you put play awesome. video in certain browsers, it plays. Certain it doesn't auto play. It just gets really messy. So we fix that, and. Um, is wow. across all browsers, including mobile. So, get I, creative. I can't wait yeah. now. You know, now what I it totally changes also the way I'm thinking about my photography because usually when we travel, I, I'm trying to take a variety of different shots. I'm trying to get some HDRs. I'm trying right. to get some good stills. Right and now, I have to be thinking, hey, this is a cool scene. Let me get 30 seconds of video footage here as well, so I can flixel flixel it. Flixelate. We're gonna, still working on that. Yeah, flix- but, uh, flixelize it. Absolutely. I think I think depending depending on the story that you're trying to tell, you're gonna you're gonna select the appropriate medium. And in certain cases, it's a still photograph. In certain cases, it's a video. And in other cases, uh, a living photo, a flixel, a cinemagraph image is I think that just the best way, the perfect way uh, to tell your story. Yeah. When you really want to draw attention to one particular Look at that. area. How beautiful is that? Yeah, that's amazing. Her like right, her right. her little dress is just flowing in the when the breeze down there. Absolutely, it's, it's yeah, that is a beautiful shot. And if you're a you know, for example, in this case, if you're a fashion designer and you want to show off, uh, you know, your your gowns and your dresses. I mean, this is just a you know beautiful example of a, of a beautiful billowing. Oh, that's no, that's just magic. That is know, awesome. That? I don't even know how he did that. That's I'm amazing. guessing that that's hanging from a little like uh, fishing wire or something. I don't know. I, I know he is Cinemagraph Pro, but yeah, exactly. That's really cool. I think that's really cool. So I. So you know, if I take a cool, if I take a cool uh, uh, Cinemagraph and upload it to my Flixel account, it might get featured here. Absolutely. If you do some beautiful art, we will definitely feature it. Sweet, sweet. Hundred percent. Well, anything else, Mark? Before we head out. No, I think, I mean, I, we went over it. I mean, I think Cinemagraph Pro is, is an amazing and easy, intuitive way to create, you know, living photos quickly uh, with beautiful results. And that's been our objective in really helping to propagate um, this new way, this new visual medium, this new way to tell stories. 
Well, I'm looking so. forward to telling them myself. So thank you so much for spending, what, probably half an hour of your time with us. We really appreciate it. I know it helped me, and it's going to help everybody else who gets to watch the video. You guys, stay tuned. We've got a lot more stuff coming at you from GeekBeat. So head on over to our channel at geekbeat.tv uh, or uh, youtube.com forward slash geekbeat.tv. Give us a thumbs up if you like it and you want us to do more of these. Uh, thanks again to Mark from Flixel for, for joining us, and thank we're you, out John, here. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. All right, we'll see you later.